Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel, baby. Ho ho ho, I got some great news for you today. In the last video we spoke about Spain today, we're talking about Stockholm in Sweden. So you can see here we're on this website called SciLife Lab and there's an event coming up here. It says Next Generation Cytogenomics with Optical Genome Mapping. It's on September 27th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Some really juicy news here you can see is Clinical Genomics Stockholm has acquired a Sapphire Optical Mapper from BioNano Genomics and it will be available as a national service. They are going to be doing it nationally. So they're conducting this kind of event to provide more information on the instrument and applications and they're going to give a seminar on it. Okay, so let's take a look at a brief read of this summary. It says, reveal more genomic variation that matters with optical genome mapping. Despite decades of progress, the promise of personalized genomic medicine remains largely elusive because no single technology can comprehensively detect all genomic rearrangements quickly, reliably, and affordably. The BioNanogenomic Sapphire system detects structural variations in an unbiased manner at much higher sensitivities than sequencing-based technologies and routinely at 5% variant allele fraction. Optical genome mapping allows for the highly sensitive detection of all structural variant types, even those present at low allele fractions in heterogeneous cancer samples in an unbiased genome-wide manner. Indeed, optical genome mapping allows allows fully automated detection of CNVs, copy number variants, repeat expansions, unbalanced events, inversions, translocations, and gene fusions, even in highly complex regions. Examples will be presented of how BioNano system finds genomic rearrangements in cancer and genetic disease that are missed by next generation sequencing or other cytogenetic methods. So this SciLife Lab, let's take a look at it. It's a laboratory in Solna, Sweden. SciLife Lab is a world-leading Swedish national center for large-scale research and one of the largest molecular bio biology research laboratories in Europe at the forefront of innovation in life sciences. Good old Wikipedia! It was established in 2010 and it was appointed as a national centre in 2013 by the Swedish government. More than 200 elite research groups comprised of 1,500 researchers are associated and work at one of the two campuses in Stockholm and Uppsala. In terms of funding, take a look at this. They're provided with SEK 150 million per year in state funds separate from other national and European grants and infrastructure support in the fields of drug discovery, drug development and fundamental research. It looks like they're really going for precision medicine when they're presenting, you know, bio-nanogenomic sapphire system. They're saying it's going to help a lot with precision medicine. How much is this SEK 150 million per year? Okay, not bad. So the SEK is Swedish krona and it's a uh, 13.8 million dollars as they said this is separate from other national and european grants and infrastructure support that's simply you know nearly 14 million dollars in state funds take a look at this other study here it was on a chinese website so i was looking it up it's about vetus amarensis also known as the amur grape is a species of grape native to the asian continent its name comes from the amur valley in russia and china it's very resistant to frost, but it is not so tolerant to droughts. So these guys were reporting on its high quality chromosome level a genome assembly, and it was captured using a combination of sequence data from Illumina, PacBio. They also use BioNanogenomics optical genome mapping and some high C mapping also. So what they managed to find was a genome wide association study uncovering this phosphoglycerate kinase gene that can contribute to the freezing resistance of the buds in the winter. So this is really valuable information for grape breeders, but also important for clarifying molecular mechanisms involved in the cold tolerance. Just wanted to see some staff as well who are working at a Clinical Genomics in Stockholm. This is the head of unit, Anna Layanda, and she said talking about her experiences have been very valuable assets for working with precision diagnostics at Clinical Genomics Stockholm. She's been there for nearly six years, so this precision medicine market is really looking quite lucrative with a lot of people saying by 2030, it's gonna be, you know, $84 billion, $174 billion market, $150 billion market. These are all from like President's Research, Globe Newswire, and Oncology alone, they're saying it's about 84 billion by 2030. So Oncology Precision Medicine. If you enjoyed these short videos, please hit me with a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, drop me some comments down below on your thoughts and feelings and any information that you find as well. Well, always remember this is not financial advice for entertainment only. I'm a bio nanogenomics stockholder. I hold 10,000 shares and I'm really bullish on the future of the company. With Eric Holmlin still reiterating, you know, 2.8 to 4.2 billion dollars annually as the market potential for bio nanogenomics, driven by millions of samples being analyzed by the traditional cytogenetic methods. He expects to convert over those to optical genome mapping methods and then complement the sequencing. With high throughput sequencing, with about 15,000 sequences out there. So he's envisioning a very broad development, wide ranging, a store based of optical genome mappers 
which would run through millions of samples on an annual basis. So market potential is $4 billion to $4.5 billion market potential. If we take a brief look at Illumina, the market cap is $31.2 billion. And let's take a look at the revenue this year. So January 2022, $1.2 billion. In the next quarter, it was $1.22 billion. July, $1.16 billion. So if these guys were, say, perhaps on average making $1.2 billion per quarter, say $4.8 billion per year, if bio nanogenomics does have this kind of potential market, it's going to be at a nice juicy valuation if we're turning over $4.5 billion per year. Eric Homlin said there's also other areas that they could be exploring where there will be even more samples to drive more utilization of optical genome mapping. And these are some of the side lists. He said population screening, newborn screening, cell bioprocessing, and as we talked about, even liquid liquid biopsy analysis somewhere in the future. So he said not only is the potential market for optical genome mapping substantial today, it's expected to grow more over time. So BioNanogenomics is still aiming for around about 240 systems by the end of the year. And they said that he believes he's still on track for 240 systems by the end of the year. But can you imagine what it's going to be like if you've got an installed base of what they've said up to 10,000 of these? As always, let me know your thoughts and feelings. Hit us with the like button, hit subscribe, drop me some comments down below. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please let me know. Just drop me some comments. Tell me on what I could improve with the videos and tell me if there's any information that you find. And also, if you're able to support the channel, please click the join button right next to my head over here. It really helps out the channel. It's only 99 cents a month, but you can join any tier to support the channel. Thank you so much for your love and support. Thank you for always watching my videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Always remember, none of this is financial advice. It's for entertainment only. Mr. Investor Life, over and out, baby.